queen. <laughs> okay, so let me scoot a little forward. <laughs> he just woke up. But this is Uriah, guys. Say hi, Papito. He's just looking. Okay. Hi. Anyway, let's talk about things they don't tell you after your pregnancy. So I feel like there's a lot of things that people just kind of, oh, it's okay. It's going to be fine. You don't have to worry about it. Truth is, that's not the real truth. <laughs> Hi, Papito. Okay. Let's start off from the day. From the time I got to the hospital till now. So, brief moment of how my whole labor went. I had a dream I had to go to the bathroom. Turns out, it was because my water was breaking. So there goes that. Made a mess everywhere. So that's another thing I don't tell you. It's not like the movies like, like, oh my God, my water broke. And it falls just on the floor. It doesn't do that. Like when your water breaks, like it's called water breaking for a reason. It's not like a little fountain. Like, oh, let me just open it a little bit and that's it. No, to me, it was more like a constant, like my water broke and it kept, I kept on, it's gonna sound weird, but it kept on leaking for, from the time it broke at four in the morning until probably the baby was born because there's constant water just coming out. So that's one thing they don't tell you, that your water doesn't just stop. Also, it's a different sensation than having peed on yourself. It's more like a warmy, slimy feeling. I don't know if that makes any sense. But that's what it is. Um, what else? I don't know if it's for a lot of you guys, but at least in my delivery, props to the nurses. Seriously. They are the ones that truly are there with you from beginning to end because for me the doctor wasn't really there and actually the doc my doctor was there for a bit but he kind of came in checked on me real quick and then left and for the actual delivering part it wasn't even my doctor that delivered me because he had just gone he had just left already it was actually another doctor I didn't even know her name and she's like okay you're ready Let's do this. And I'm just like, hi, like, who are you? I mean, I was in really, like, pain. But that's one of the things that they don't tell you either. Like, whoever is on duty, it's the one that's going to be taking the child out. Um, what else? So, another thing I learned is that... Oh, excuse you? My child, ladies and gentlemen, my child. <laughs> Another thing I learned is that birthing has become a business. And I'm being serious when I say that, a business. I mean, like, you're in and out of the hospital so quick. Like, it is crazy. So, that's, if you're good to go, they're going to be like, okay, you're discharged. That's it. It's not like before. I remember when my, uh, my aunt was pregnant she probably stayed in the hospital for four three days and now i was seriously in the hospital for 24 hours that was it just 24 hours then i was discharged sent home at seven o'clock at night and came home with my baby okay so that night at the hospital he was latching on this is about feeding at the hospital he was latching on once we got home he was not latching on so that night it was such a struggle 
I was I was so worried. Thank goodness my mom had stayed with me that night. Actually she stayed with me for a whole week. Um from the hospital. So she's the one that helped me out a whole bunch that 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 first week that I was here at home. Um so what they don't tell you at the hospital, what most people don't tell you is that you have to force your baby to latch on. Although that is your natural instinct to attach to your breast, they don't automatically do it. Like you have to force the nipple in. I know that's right. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. But you have to force it in to their mouth or they will not eat. Um, so my baby unfortunately did not latch. So he is bottle fed. He he likes the bottle more than he like this. <laughs> so what else don't they tell you? To be honest, babies don't need much. Seriously, white t-shirts are lifesavers. This white t-shirt right here, the more you have, the better. You don't need to dress them up in cute outfits. At least not for for the first three months. Seriously, don't buy things. It is not worth it. They don't need it. They they just they're happy in white shirts. Ooh, one other thing they don't tell you. Sitting my hair <laughs> for the first couple of weeks. I know that's kind of weird to say, but sitting does hurt for the first couple of weeks. Like it just there was pressure down there on the stay. I don't know how else to describe it. But it does hurt. Um and then also it's not like the movies like like your baby it's gonna be happy all the time like your baby's gonna have mood swings all the time and like things that you would be used to doing all like routine things that you would do on a daily basis like it is not the same like your life it's seriously at 24 7 it's not like it it doesn't snooze into you it's not a thing that like oh like well it'll take adjustment like oh not adjustment in that way but mostly like like if the baby does that like it'll, it'll take time for me to to it to process it's no it's more like if the baby does that you better be ready to like like handle it so for me i think the biggest thing has been still feeding at night even though i don't breastfeed i still have to get up and make a bottle in the middle of the night so that's one of the biggest things for me just the lack of sleep seriously the lack of sleep is incredible but I've been sleeping much better since then he has been sleeping a lot more puppy you're falling forward um what else mm, I didn't get any postpartum depression although a lot of people had told me that that's one of the signs of like after pregnancy so I'm so thankful that that didn't happen to me that just it was I guess I'm blessed uh, let me see formula it is expensive formula it is so pricey seriously a can of formula is almost $20 so there goes that so I wouldn't say I mean yes babies are expensive and yes you might want to be financially stable but you know what they're such a blessing that I would not give this little one back at all. He's like my little prince right here. Right, puppy? Right? Yeah, he doesn't care about this. <laughs> anyway. There's like a lot of things that they don't tell you before pregnancy. Or actually after giving birth. It's seriously not like the movies. The movies just paint a fantasy. It is truly not like that. Um, there's one thing if you do bottle feed try not to get them used to one bottle because seriously it is horrible if you can't find that bottle or the or you you run out of bottles or just something happens or you lose it or you forget it somewhere you don't want to be stuck with like the bottles that he doesn't like and then it's gonna be a problem for you um, my baby I think he uses three different kinds of bottles so that's good because in the middle of the night I just grab whatever bottle I find and he drinks it 
and you don't want to be stuck with a baby crying in the middle of the night and you just wake up the whole neighborhood um also one thing i have a pug and a lot of people were like oh like you need to get rid of your dog like you cannot have your dog and your baby living under the same roof you know what to me if you have a pet guys i would say introduce the baby to the pet as soon as you can i mean don't let the baby lick i mean don't let the dog or the pet whatever you have lick the baby all over or like you know like just introduce it like let the pet smell it because at the end of the day if you want your dog to be there they have to be immune to what the dog how the dog is and your dog has to get used to the baby and has to learn how to behave and be around a small child so i i would seriously recommend you guys just take a day by day that's what i did every single day i would let my my dog just come by smell him a little bit and that was it and i'll be like okay that's enough um now he can lace with him so it's good and they they there's like they behave so well together i'm so happy because they're both my babies i mean my dog has been with me through everything so that's good um so i mean unless you really just can't do it and you need to not have your dog there i would probably the other best thing for me would be do just give it to a family member until you're ready to bring him back because i don't know i don't i don't think i could ever get rid of my dog he he's family to us um my baby hasn't started crawling yet so i wouldn't be able to tell you guys about like things that you shouldn't have around but i mean my place there's not really much things that he can reach to but when he gets to stage we'll talk about that um also one last thing the amount of love you'll have for them is incredible and like you just feel like this responsibility but this great like amazing responsibility like like you just want to be like there for them all the time so this one's not allowed to date anyone <laughs> just kidding no babies are amazing i babies are seriously amazing each day they do something different that you never thought that well not thought they could do but each day they do something different and whee, he's not liking it anymore each day they do something new and you're just like oh my god like like you've, you you're just amazed it's like a brand new baby each single day today for instance um he rolled over to the side and was just laying and looking at me the whole time seriously i started crying i'm just like oh my god he's like a new bigger person now but if you're thinking about having a baby with your husband partner whoever i highly recommend it they are seriously amazing the best thing i've ever done and they're there for you right papito yeah he's my little prince anyway guys it's been a long video already we will see you later right darling say bye <laughs> bye everyone no nope. okay yep he's not gonna like it bye guys <laughs>